this person that said his name three times. So I do want to talk about Jamison okay. Williams for a second. We've talked about this before. I can't decide right now. If you look at a lot of consensus boards, I, I don't think the consensus board that we use have has them at 21, but some of the other ones that I've seen floated out there on Twitter have Jamison Williams right there, right? 20, 21, somewhere in that range. And the, the, the board we use uh, NFL mock draft, NFL mock draft database.com. They have them 17 on the big board, 26 on the consensus mock draft. So that's in the neighborhood. Because there's no question about it that Jamison Williams, in my mind, is every good as uh, as a prospect as Jalen Waddle was. And Jalen Waddle was a top ten t- top ten pick in Miami because he was healthy, right? So you're getting that level of speed and that level of game breaking ability, but you're getting it probably 15 picks after you probably would normally get it in the draft, right? But at the same time, he's he's injured. And I, I don't have as much of a concern about playing the long game with Jamison Williams and hoping that he comes back and, and all that sort of thing quickly. My mo- m- bigger concern is re-injury. And is tearing ACL is going to become a thing for him? Because the worst thing that you could possibly have is that Jamison Williams finally works his way back. He gets on the field for the Patriots and on his third target, he tears his left ACL, right? You know, cause he's overcompensating or something like that. That would be with all the bad luck the Patriots have had picking wide receivers early in the draft. That's, that's how this movie goes. Right? Yeah. <laughs> like, that's how this movie goes. So I, I, I almost want to stay away from Jamison Williams just to avoid that catastrophe altogether. But again, my bigger concern with him is re-injury, not necessarily him healing from this ACL that he has right now. Yeah. And by the way, he's listed at 6'2", 185. He's not like a big guy. No. He's, he's big. He's tall, but he's not. He's going to he, take hits. Yeah. He's, he's going to he, yeah. right, take a beating. My thing with Jamison Williams, I and I, 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 I've been waiting for something to kind of talk me out of this take, and I haven't gotten there yet. I with the Patriots specifically, and look, he's my wide. If he's healthy right now, he's my wide receiver one in this class. Like he's and he's a top ten pick, and we're not even bringing him up. But yeah. my thing with Williams, as it relates to the Patriots, is I remember like they've had so much trouble developing receivers. And remember with Harry, he got off to that great start and then he hurt his hamstring in Detroit in the preseason game. And like three years later, really has never caught up to where he was. And I think, you know, some of that's on him. Some of that's on the team. They tried to rush him back from that injury, which was bizarre. And I just, it's, if they take a wide receiver in the first round and I don't think they yeah. have a shot at, at, at Williams in the second round. That's why it's, I, I feel different about Mechie because I think you can get him later. Right. right. If you take a wide receiver in the first round, he has to work. He has to work. I think you're putting Mac Jones development on the line with that. I don't want a guy. I'm not, I'm not putting that much on a guy who won't be there for mini camp for OTAs for training camp, right? That first, that first off season preseason is so, so crucial to a wide receivers development and instead, you're going to have him not just coming into the team cold, coming into the NFL cold in October yeah. or November. And then you look at the way this coaching staff is set up. I just don't I, – I think it's a tremendous risk to try to wedge his development into all of that. Right. Especially given the, the way they've struggled to develop receivers in the past. Well, now you have to develop a guy again, but you're, you're four months behind schedule and the season's going on. That that part just worries me. Yeah, so that's why I I'm not on Williams. And again, I, Mechie's different for a couple of reasons. He's later second on second round. Yeah. He's a second yeah. round pick. He's Might even worked be later. with Mac. Right. right, he's worked with Max. That's a little different. But yeah, I'm out on Williams for now. Again, yeah, if, if I can be talked out of it, like I'm not dug in on that take. But that's how I feel right now. It's much easier to recover from an ACL now. Again, I I think we're both in the school of thought that that we're not worried about him recovering from the ACL. We're worried about what happens next after he recovers from the ACL, right? You know, I'm, I'm worried, worried about, about him recovering like as a football player, not necessarily like raw phys- physically. Right. Right. And you do feel like though his role, and maybe this is something that they won't end up doing, and this is kind of the Wandell Robinson discussion we were just having, right? But it's 
jet sweeps and stuff behind the line of scrimmage it's crossers and it's verticals right like how hard can that possibly be to get that guy into the offense you know it's just at some point you have wasn't that also supposed to be Nikhil harry's role in a way but Nikhil harry wasn't a 4-2 guy you know what i mean right like jameson williams speed is just so game breaking and so ridiculous i mean i posted a clip of him today against mississippi state where he takes a you know 12 yard hook and just outruns the entire defense right i mean it's just he's got that level of breakaway speed that is next level now i'm with you though it's tough it really is tough uh to take a player especially in the first round that's injured right if right. you're talking about a second round pick way, way different a first round pick with an ACL injury, that's a tough especially protocol. especially at that position. Look, they did this with Chad Jackson years ago. This was the right. idea behind drafting Chad Jackson was you were getting probably a top 10 talent coming off a of torn ACL. Another one a lot of people freak out at. And by the way, if they do draft Williams, he doesn't work out. If you've tweeted about Dominique Easley since 2017. You're not yeah. allowed to, and, and, and you want them to draft Jameson Williams. You're not allowed to complain if he doesn't work out. Like this is the people who are calling for this. I just think it's a little funny given a lot of what, basically everything we've given this team, a lot of what we've given this team heat for in the draft process for the last few years. And again, I think the two guys, it's kind of a crossroads of Nikhil Harry and Dominique Easley. And that's not to say, I don't think Jameson Williams will be a bad player. Like I think he in the right spot, he's going to be very good. But I think that where the blind spots are for this team in terms of the draft and player development, yeah. Jamison Williams sits right in that blind spot. Yeah. So you're, it's, it, it's such a tremendous ask for them to take him and get it to work because it's everything that they, that's been elusive to them for the last five or six years or maybe longer. Yeah. I feel like that's why I've gravitated towards a guy like Olave if they're going to go first round, because he's the type of technician that usually succeeds here. Right. Uh, I'm more on day two for that reason too. You know, I think there are other names that obviously we can throw out there and we'll probably, as I keep, you know, obviously repeating, we definitely will. The Patriots will end up taking Drake London or something like that just to torture me. Oh, you love Drake London. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Big so Drake London guy. Him. Uh, NFL mock draft database. He's not a consensus first round pick. Good. Because here's the biggest problem with Drake London. Okay. He's six foot five, 210 pounds. The guy's a green bean, right? You got, he's not Mike Evans. Everybody wants to comp him to Mike Evans. Mike Evans was six, five, 230 pounds, right? Drake London is not that size. He's much skinnier. He's much thinner than a guy like Mike Evans. He doesn't have the play strength of a guy like Mike Evans, Oh God, foot speed, not there. Route running ability, good for a six foot five receiver. What does that mean? That means bad, right? Like saying a guy runs good routes for six foot five is just admitting that the guy's a bad route runner. I, I just, that's the type of guy that they like because he's big, he can block, he can go up and get the ball and they'll draft him and he will be Nikhil Harry again, right? Like it's, it's just the same thing. Right. If he runs in the four fours, then I'll change my mind, but he's not going to. He's going to run mid four fives. I'm sure of it. And a lot of people that I respect, you know, a lot of really big draft experts, Todd McShay, uh, Dan Brugler from the athletic, you know, a lot of these guys have, have Drake London very, very high on their board. So I'm definitely in the, you're, you're breaking from the pack this year between Drake yeah. London, Devin Lloyd. Yeah. You just hate the pack yeah. 12 clearly. You're just still bitter at the Pac-12 for it's in the kill thing, right? Thanks for watching our content of the six-time Super Bowl champion, New England Patriots. Please subscribe to my podcast, Patriots Be, on our YouTube channel, Patriots Press Pass, or wherever you get your podcasts for a lot more exclusive content right here on the CLNS Media Network.